What we do here is go back, 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 back. My fellow limitless, lawless, sexy, sexy, saucy, HBICs, how you doing on this lovely morning, afternoon, or evening? How are you all? How are things going? Hmm? How are things going? Are you deciding to be the version of your damn self that gets whatever you want? I hope so. If not, why? Why? You have no excuse. Anyway, um, basic bitch, if you need help. Figuring out what's going on between a you and your manifestation. Please feel free to email me at manifestingwithkimberly at gmail.com. All of my coaching options are in the drop box below. They're in the screens that just went by. I have two channel memberships. One is called the Exclusive Lives Coaching. I go live with them every single Tuesday around 9.30 p.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. I have the Hot Seat slash Group Coaching, which, oh, I should say, the exclusive group is for zhuzhing, successes, tips and tricks only. We do not discuss specific to you circumstances. We're not doing that. That's for the hot seat group. And I go live with my hot seat slash group coaching group every single Friday around 9 a.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. That is the only group that gets recorded. And if you join that group, you have access to both groups. That's the group that you can get as specific as hell. You can ask me anything in regards to your scenario. So I have TikTok, I have Instagram, I have Clapper. I would love for you to join me everywhere. If you are new here, how you doing? I'm Kimberly and I am obsessed with manifestation. I love talking about getting what we want because I love getting what I want. That's that's who I am, yeah? And uh, I would love for you to subscribe. I would love for you to subscribe and come back and see me. I am like this all the time. Yeah, I'm very rarely chill. It's boring. So. I'm gonna jump right in. This is going to be a typical SP video. However, we'll put the spin on it as per usual. It doesn't matter what you're manifesting. This message can still apply to you, okay? So take the, take the phrase specific person out and enter what it is that you're manifesting. That's who you are deciding to be. Whatever it is you're manifesting, you are deciding to be the version of yourself that has it. So is it money, health, career? uh grades it doesn't matter buying a new home buying a car all these things identify as being that person that has it that's the key and it's the same thing we do when we're manifesting a specific person but why am i seemingly all judged and why am i recording when my hair is still wet and i don't have any makeup on i don't have nothing on i'm looking like regular basic bitch kim because i get it i get judged i get judged and i want to talk about something and it's something that is not lost on me and also to help reassure anyone out there manifesting a specific person that you absolutely can manifest anyone specifically so i want to thank uh my girl uh, renge renge because she is who initially brought this success story to my attention and it would never have caught my attention because i discovered something today that there is the author her name's uh, genevieve berend I could be pronouncing that wrong. That's how I've always called it. Okay. That's what she was to me. Um, and the, she has a book called Your Invisible Power. Now, I did not initially own that book. I own another book of hers. And, you know, Renge was sharing with me um, how she saw a, or read up, you know, heard about a success story in it that was really pleasurable. And, um, you know, I should take a look at it. So, I'm like, well, I've heard of her before, but the book I have is definitely not called The Invisible Power that doesn't, that it's not sounding familiar. So I go to Amazon, I purchase it from my Kindle and um, I get it and I start, you know, I read it. It's, it's actually a rather short book. And I'm like, there ain't no success story about a specific person in this bitch. <laughs> it don't, it's not here. So what, you know, Renge, I think you messed up. Well, no, she did not. You see in the the book that you can get your hands on okay now i'm not sure if there's other publications around 
but what you can purchase off Amazon does not include that specific success story. And I found that interesting. And that, why is it interesting to me? Because this book was, I believe, originally written in 1921. And I know, I know that there are, that there are two specific quotes from Neville Goddard that the specific person naysayers try to, you know, they cling to that, that Neville was saying, you can't manifest someone specifically. Well, I disagree. 100% disagree with you. Because Neville didn't, didn't just slip in a specific person's success story for no damn reason. We need to keep in mind of Neville's time. When Neville was, you know, alive and well and sharing this beautiful knowledge of manifestation, it was a judgy time. We still live in a judgy area, but we can change that with manifestation. But we still, it still could be a little bit judgy. Like we still got the naysayers, the specific person naysayers. They, they still exist, okay? Do we, do we manifest, they change their mind. But think about what it was like to live around Neville's time, okay? Now go back a little further, because right, because listen, manifestation talk didn't start with Neville Goddard. He's just, and I love Neville. This is not me pooping on him. I'm saying he's the most popular name. It's who we mostly refer to in, from this community and within the law of assumption. But he's not the discoverer. This this topic of manifestation, or that we are doing something with our mind, with our, you know, within our world, is a topic that has been. It's coming from like I'm telling you, like the original days of human race type of original days. So, you know, I, I kind of keep it simple over here so this message can apply to all, but it didn't start with Neville, okay? And Genevieve was before Neville, as, as are several other authors or mystics who have shared this message, right? Because Neville had to learn it from somewhere too, right? Abdullah, I'm just saying. So, I find it incredibly interesting and certainly not a coincidence that this success story was taken out of her book. Again, there might be hard copies somewhere else that still include this, but you're not buying it on Amazon, at least not the Kindle version. You are not. And why do you think it was removed? Why do you think the specific person's success story was removed? Bearing in mind, this was written in 1921. Because of the time this this woman this beautiful knowledgeable fucking Siri this beautiful knowledgeable woman it was taken out because that's one hell of a oof, concept that we can influence another person or that you know and i know some people struggle with that you're not going against someone's free will you are choosing a different version okay limited minded people okay you're choosing a different one but anyway so I want to read the success story. Um, it, you can search for it. It will be in the PDF version. It, as far as I can tell, that's the only one I've been able to find is PDF version. Um, I'm going to read it for you because it's a zhuzh. And it, for any of you out there who have third party scenarios, this is the one for you too. You're going to like this success story. Now in this um, particular chapter, um, she was discussing visualization. And for any of you out there who aren't natural visualizers, you don't enjoy it, that's okay. Affirming, scripting, inner conversations, they still work. They're still getting you there. It's okay. Don't get hung up on the fact that she's talking about specifically visualizing. You know, what do I mostly talk about? Making a fucking decision, deciding to be a version of yourself, right? Embodying that version, embodying the state. That's my thing. That's what I like to do. So that's what I talk about. So Genevieve in this chapter was heavy on the visualization, but visualizing is not the only way to manifest. It's all about who you believe you are. So don't get hung up on that. Okay. But let's read this bitch. And I also want to mention before I start reading, I want you to pay attention to how Genevieve was very honest with saying how this woman was showing up. Meaning how she, like she was showing up really fucking triggered, really upset, like every single one of us has experienced before. A woman came to me for help to cause her husband to return to her. She said she was very unhappy and lonely without him and longed to be reunited. I told her she could not lose love and protection because both belonged to her. 
She asked what she should do to get her husband back. I told her to follow the great power of intuition and think of her husband as perfectly free and the embodiment of all that a husband should be. She went away quite happy, but returned in a few days to tell me that her husband desired a divorce in order to marry again. She was quite agitated and had evidently relaxed her will in following the instructions given at the former interview. Again, I told her to hold constantly in her mind that the loving protection of the spirit of life would guide her in perfect happiness. A month later, she came again and said that her husband had married the other woman. This time, she had completely lost her mental grip. I repeated the words for her as before, and she regained her poise. Two months later, she came back to me full of joy. Her husband had come to her, begging her forgiveness and telling her what a terrible mistake he had made as he could not be happy without her. They are now living happily together and she at least learned the necessity of holding her pictured desires steadily in place by the use of her will. Visualizing without a will sufficiently steady to inhibit every thought and feeling contrary to your pictured thought would be as useless as a magic lantern without the life. On the other hand, if your will is sufficiently developed to hold your picture in thought and feeling without any ifs, simply realizing that your thought is the great attracting power, then your mental picture is as certain to be projected upon your physical world as a picture slide put into a magic lantern shows on the screen. Now I am gonna kim some of that down for you. Don't get hung up on her wording. This is still manifestation. Yeah, we're probably not really attracting to us, but who cares? This was her perspective from 1921. People, we all get so hung up on the perfect wording of everything instead of seeing the bigger picture that, hey, I can choose to be the version of myself that's having what I desire and it has to show up in the 3D. That's what you should be taking away from this. Honestly, there's nothing to fear. This woman's husband left her, married someone else, and she still got his ass back. Still got his ass back. Why? Because she kept returning to her decision, even though she was triggered, even though she was reacting and responding to her 3D because she's a damn human. This is why I tell you countless times that it doesn't matter if you're having a bad day. It doesn't matter that you're crying or you're angry or you're just disappointed that the 3D hasn't changed it. It doesn't matter. Return to your decision. You're still going to get what you want. You're still going to get it. Return, return, return. So, so what's the takeaway of this? So why did I bring this up, okay? Why am I reading you another success story? Because, guys, some of us worry. We worry that if we have a bad day or if we have a day where we're not believing in this or we take a day off from manifestation because we're just not feeling it, we think it sets us back. It doesn't set us back. It doesn't. It's working even if we don't think it does. And like I said, I love that she shared how the woman was having a breakdown, was really upset each time she saw her. Because that's real. That's a realistic success story, in my opinion. Because we're humans and we're going to have our moments. We don't have to look at that as a limiting belief. It's okay. It's okay that she was triggered. It's okay that she cried and was on, I forgot the words already, losing her mental grip. She still manifested what she wanted. She still got rid of a third party and manifested the return of her husband. It still happened. Even though she got triggered, even though she was disbelieving, she chose to not give up. She chose not to give up. So what are you doing? Are you giving up or are you choosing to return to your decision to be the version of yourself that has what you want? And this is my reminder of this is not about you lying to yourself and saying that you already see it in your physical 3D. That's okay. We don't need you to lie to yourself. You can just decide, I am that new self. I am her already or him already. 
I might not believe it. I might not feel like it, but I am making that decision that that is who I am. I know I'm in the right reality. I'm making all the right choices. I can't mess this up. I can't because I'm not doing it alone. I'm doing it with my I amness, whether you believe that's God, universe, whatever. I'm working with my I amness because that's who I truly am at my core. Pure, unadulterated consciousness. Do we all know what that means? That means whatever you want it to mean. What's pure, unadulterated consciousness to you? To me, it's unconditional love. And what does that mean? That means it's God. If you don't believe in God, it can be universe, source energy, higher power. It's a decision. We should honestly drop the whole creating, even the manifesting part, and call it choosing. Because all of this is a decision. Don't give up when you feel like shit. Don't give up when you're doubting. Don't give up. Take a step back. Let yourself know that it is okay that you feel a certain type of way, but you're still going to return. You're still going to stand in your decision that you are allowed to experience whatever it is you desire. Poop is snoring her balls off right now. Huh? Oh, oh, poop. Yeah, she's snoring her balls off. But it is your birthright to experience your desires. It is your birthright. The fact that you are here having this human experience, your job is to awaken, awaken, awaken to who you truly are so that you can experience joy, whatever that means for you. And if it means a specific person, then so fucking be it. But decide that's who you are, despite what you think and feel. And on that note, I'll see you tomorrow.